Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Advanced Warfare In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the KF5 Spanner, which is the elite variant of the KF5 and also identical to the KF5 Royalty variant. So we're kind of doing a little bit of a two-in-one here. Just keep in mind that the Royalty variant is statistically identical to the Spanner, with the exception of the fact that it has an extra magazine in reserve. There are some good things about this elite variant, but there are also some bad and frustrating things, and I feel that my gameplay will be showing off both of those. Let's talk about the good things first. It has a flat plus 15% range and this covers all ranges. This is 15% to your close range damage and 15% to your medium range damage. So all ranges, all times to kill, all damage over range, all of that's been extended, just a flat bonus, which is pretty cool. It's kind of like the ASM-1 magnitude in that regard. And the KF-5 already had the best three shot range of all the submachine guns and the highest damage. Only on the first shots did it have the highest damage though. So this is just a flat bonus to the strongest thing about the KF-5. And if you stack advanced rifling on that, you can three shot up to 18 meters. To put that in perspective, that's better than most assault rifles. Actually, that's better than every single assault rifle except for the HBRA-3, which I think is like 21 meters. That outperforms the Mark 14 three-shot range. That's better than the STG three-shot range. That's way better than the BAL. It's better than the AK-12's four-shot range. So you can three-shot dump truck people with this weapon very, very effectively if you get those first three shots on and you're using advanced rifling. Insane range on that one. Very, very good performance. And it also has no damage penalties, unlike the Marksman. The Marksman is statistically very similar, with the exception of the fact that you do have a penalty to long-range damage, and most of the weapons in this game that do have bonus range or buff to that kind of initial range do have damage penalties. We don't have that at all on the KF-5 Spanner. Random factoid, I think it looks really neat. I kind of like the longer barrel or the extended barrel on there. I like the design on it. I think it's a really cool-looking gun, but now we have to put all that coolness aside and talk about something very, very bad, which I think is kind of the Achilles heel of this weapon, and that's the fact that it has a very low rate of fire. The normal rate of fire on the KF-5 is 869 RPM. This is what it's coded. This is what you can do on PC. On console, bear in mind it'll round down a little bit due to frame rounding. However, the spanner rate of fire is massively decreased down to 674, and do keep in mind that due to frame rounding, that's going to go down a little bit again. So you have a very, very, very low rate of fire on this gun, and I think that's what makes it weak. That's what makes me not like it. And it's, it fires at the same speed as an LM G. It fires at the same speed as the BAL when it's winding up in its initial kind of RPM there. It is quite slow, way too slow for any sort of submachine gun that I like, and it has an overall slow time to kill outside of close quarters combat. Now inside close quarters combat, if we're getting our first five shots on point, if we get that three shot kill going on, very good. Even, you know, it's, it's decent. However, if you miss any of your first five shots and you go to that decreased damage range, it's going to take four to kill, and due to the slow rate of fire, that's going to make it very, very slow time to kill, and it's going to be very frustrating in that regard, so I don't find it to be very useful outside of close quarters combat, or unless I catch somebody standing still at long ranges that I can just kind of peg them. It's a little harder in AW where they're zipping around. And I think that's a really frustrating thing about the weapon. There is one good thing about the lower rate of fire. That means slightly less effective recoil. It has the exact same amount of kick as the other KF-5 variants, but with the lower rate of fire, it's kicking less often. It is easier to control. And I know the KF-5 is somewhat difficult for most people to control. This is going to make it easier still. That's not the only penalty we have when it comes to accuracy. The KF-5 spanner also has a 10% wider hip fire spread, which means you are less likely to get hip fire kills with this weapon, which means getting up close and spraying people like the base variant is slightly less likely and that is frustrating and it did catch up to me a couple of times while making this video not a lot it's not a huge penalty but it's just a little just a little sprinkling of penalty it's just like some little penalty sprinklers on there on your uh, kf5 ice cream there and overall i find this variant to be difficult to use due to the very low rate of fire i can deal with the wider hip fire spread it's not the greatest thing but the low rate of fire means that the time to kill is going to be too low and speakeasies and bowels are just going to shred you now if you get any of your first five shots on point, the time to kill is pretty good up close. It's got good range on it, but after that, after those first five shots, you're going down to four shots to kill and a slow rate of fire, and your time to kill gets longer and longer and longer and less and less competitive. And unless you're playing search and destroy and your only goal is to kill one person before you have to reload, it's not very effective, and that's why I have difficulty using it. However, if you do decide to use this weapon, I recommend it with advanced rifling, obviously to extend the three-shot range as far as possible. Quick draw, because you're going to be doing a lot of aim down 
down sights because your hip fire spread is wider, not recommended, and because it's essential that you get your first shots on point, you really can't sacrifice much else, and foregrip for extra accuracy makes it easier to control. Some people recommended running rapid fire, I didn't find that as useful because it kicked a little bit too much for me, and some people would recommend dropping the foregrip and adding a dot sight, just which, whatever helps you get your shots on point. For me it's foregrip, for some people it's dot sight, and that's how I would recommend using it. Guys, that's all for this episode, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. The previous episode is on the SBO sniper rifle, and the next one is going to be kind of a funny one on the XMG bread and butter. Drifter out.